Good evening and welcome back to Byline. This is a collaborative effort of the Amherst League of Women Voters and Amherst Media. It's a public affairs show. And the focus of our work here on this 30-minute show each Friday evening and repeated each Monday evening is uh, to introduce you to and dig deeper into the background and the thinking of our all of our new legislators. We have a new Amherst Town Council. We also have a new state representative and a new state senator. So uh, you're being represented both uh, here in Town Hall and in Boston uh, by a whole new crew of people. And uh, this is an opportunity for you uh, over the course of the next year or so to get to know uh, your elected representatives better and understand what's happening with our town council as it evolves because it's a work in progress. Uh, the charter was written, the charter was voted upon, the charter passed, the council's now been sworn in, but it's a new form of government and we have a lot to learn and a lot to experience. And tonight we're gonna hear uh, from our newly elected vice president of the Amherst Town Council, uh, Mandy Jo Haneke. Now, Mandy, this is fascinating because when I think about you, I'm trying to figure out what hat are you wearing at any given moment because you bring, you sit at that table as one person, but you're wearing three different hats. You're the only person on the council that served on the Charter Commission and you were the vice chair of the Charter Commission. Yep. You are also now uh, a, a newly elected officer of the council. Yeah. You are the vice president and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what that means. And you're also uh, an at-large counselor, one of three. I am, And yeah. so how do you keep that all straight? <laughs> It's tough, you know, especially the Charter Commission hat, um, because naturally, if there's a question about the Charter, or is this in a Charter or not, at this point, most of those questions, everyone turns their head and stares at me um, and says, well, what do you think? And, and so, you know, I, I have to constantly say, you know, I, putting my Charter Commissioner hat on, this is what the Charter Commission was hoping. And, and I take that responsibility seriously, because I, as the only charter commissioner now on the council, I, I have the sort of biggest voice potential for how to interpret that charter from all nine of the former commissioners. And so I want to make sure I'm doing that in a good and true way to what we as charter commissioners intended. Um, you know, and then there's the at-large camp portion. You know, one of three of us, we were elected by everyone in town instead of a portion of town and so we're respond you know everyone on council is responsible for and responsive to the whole town right. but we're the ones that are elected by everyone in town and so we have to you know that makes us more you know accountable to the entire town if if some controversial vote comes up mm -hmm. you know we would be more looking at it as Townwide versus what do my singular constituents in one district um, right. want? That's not to say that n no other councillor besides the at-larges are considering the what's best town. for the town because right. everyone because, is. That's right. um, but but we're the but ones. Their first obligation is to the people who elected who elected them. them. Yes, and that's the people in their district, two precincts. But in your case, and that's Andy everyone. And Alyssa, it's yeah. the whole town. It is. It's the whole yeah. town. So there, there's that sort of perspective to consider when when listening to residents um, and what's what's coming at us in public comment and all and then there's the vice presidency um, there's only technically one job for me which is if Lynn Greesom or our current president isn't at a meeting I'm the one that runs the meeting um, but you know I, there's there's other responsibilities I think and that come with that that aren't written in the charter because the charter doesn't include everything for example um, you know I think it's my duty to make sure I know what's going on in case Lynn can't attend mm -hmm. a meeting you right. know or a couple meetings you know I, I have to be able to step into that role in and be ready for that role. And yeah. um, so I think there's a little bit more background. So that means even though you all have an obligation to read all 30 documents you were given for <laughs> yes. next Monday's meeting, <laughs> you have a special responsibility because you might actually end up having to take the gavel. I might have to take the gavel, and know what motions are coming, but not only that, um, 
if, if she doesn't end up at a meeting or a couple of meetings, I'm the one that has to set the agenda. So right. I think, you know, my, my other responsibility, I think, is trying to keep in tr track of what needs to come up, what isn't coming up, where things are going, and, you know, because the planning doesn't happen just for one meeting. Right. You know, we're, we're planning multiple meetings ahead. Time, and, sure. and so trying to, I, I think the vice president needs to be aware of what's going on so that if it comes up, you know where things are coming in yeah. and are ready for that. So, and to go back to your role um, as having been the vice chair of the Charter Commission, and this jumped out at the December 10th meeting uh, when I saw you uh, uh, pipe up and, and uh, you had a discussion about, um, about um, uh, let's see, the approval of the rank choice voting work of the committee that mm -hmm. will be formed. It's in the process of yep. now being formed and is meeting and is, is preparing their recommendations on ranked choice voting. Well, I thought that was a very interesting moment because there was this big debate about um, council action versus a council uh, approval. Yep. And um, there was a third word which is escaping. It also began with a D. Uh, mm. uh, but okay, it's, yeah. that's not particularly Adopting. relevant. Adopted. Adopting. That's it. It's, yes. It didn't begin with a D, but it began with an A. <laughs> it's got the D in it. <laughs> we got the right. Okay. So, um, so talk about um, why why that point was important that you pipe up at that moment, and at that moment you had your former hat on as charter commission member. Yeah. Uh, but you were sitting there as another councillor about to make. Uh, a decision about what to do going forward. Talk about that. Yeah, so I, I had to put my Charter Commission hat on because I realized at that point um, that that the Charter Commission in creating, we, we had set up in, in the Charter two commissions that we wanted the Council to create. Um, this Ranked Choice Voting one and a Participatory Budgeting Commission. And we worked on the language and the Charter Commission, one of the things I can categorically say the Charter Commission agreed on 100% unanimously was the adoption of Ranked Choice Voting. It's about the only thing we always agreed on. And so when we wrote the language of you need to form that commission, we, we as charter commissioners didn't think it was appropriate to write the legislation mm -hmm. to adopt ranked choice voting. So we said that, that needs to go to someone else. But how do we ensure that it be adopted? Because, yeah, we can say create a committee and then the council can just ignore it. Um, and we didn't want that to happen. So we wrote into the charter specifically since we wanted ranked choice voting adopted that the commission would have to propose a measure and that the council would have to adopt the measure instead of just act on the measure where an action can be saying no mm -hmm. or tabling it and never acting, you know, taking a vote that doesn't adopt. And so we made that distinction in the charter and at that meeting I realized the item we were, the charge we were adopting to create the commission didn't actually said act, not yeah. adopt. And right. I said, wait a second, that's not what we have to do by what the charter says. So yeah, I was, I was attempting to modify as a counselor what it said based on my knowledge as a charter commissioner as to what the charter commission wrote and intended. The participatory budgeting commission, on the other hand, just requires the council to act. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to adopt the recommendations of okay. that commission when that commission comes back with a measure. Okay. Um, they don't have to. And, and so we, there were portions of the charter that we made that distinction. So there's a couple of really interesting things in that. First, with regard to ranked choice voting, you made a policy decision as a charter commission, yes. but you didn't want to write the legislation. Right. You wanted to leave that to a panel of people that would be appointed uh, further on, later on in the process. Yes. And that group is going to be appointed, and then they're going to prepare their work, and they're going to submit it. Yes. Does the council have to uh, rubber stamp that? No. Um, it can amend it? It can amend it. Okay. And, and yes, and that says that in the charter. And, and it may or may not. Um, it is one that hopefully the council will work with whoever's appointed. It's, it's an interesting appointment process. That's the, of the two commissions, the rank choice voting we, as charter commissioners, did not say a councilor needs to be on. Whereas mm -hmm. the participatory budgeting that the council doesn't have to adopt Right. We did put a counselor on. Um, okay. Yeah, so, so it has to adopt it, but it could amend it. 
Um, and the goal is hopefully they'll look into it. It'll get potentially, once the commission comes back, referred to an own council committee to look right. into it. But the goal of having that commission was create people who are experts in right choice voting to do that research because the commission, the charter commission was not. And so these two things are examples of your ability as a former member of the charter commission to be able to explain and clarify the intention of the Charter Commission. Yes. And that's a very serious responsibility it because is. you... And because I'm the one that has the voice now to do that or the easiest voice. And you're the only one voice. of those Charter Commission yes. members who are sitting at the table. Right, which is why I take it extremely seriously when people ask me, well, what is that meant? Because mm -hmm. there are some things in the Charter I didn't agree with, but are in there. And mm -hmm. so I have to go back and think, what did we as a commission intend, even if I don't agree with it, mm -hmm. or didn't want it in there, or voted against it? Um, and then there's some things that I do agree with, but maybe in a different sense. And so I'm always trying to go back to what conversations did we have that caused us mm -hmm. to put that in, and then re rephrase that and frame that for those that have to now interpret it, and say, this is what we were hoping would happen. Obviously, if it's an interpretation, it yeah. doesn't have to be done that way. <laughs> right. And so when we're watching you struggle there with that hat on, we have to be thinking about, about the effort that you're making to fairly represent what happened over a multiple year period yes. a few years ago to the best of your ability. Yes. Okay. Now, but another thing that sort of jumps out there, and that is one of the things that moved the community in the direction after four attempts over, I think it's either four or maybe five attempts over 40 years to change its form of government was frustration that a lot of people had that town committees were set up with volunteer, volunteers from the community who took their charge seriously. Mm -hmm. They worked hard. They did their research. They did their homework. They took field trips. They did whatever they needed to do to try to come up with the best ideas sort through them, come up with a proposal, and then present it to the community. Yeah. And very often, it would like go up in smoke. Yes. So when I'm listening to you talk about ranked choice voting and how the commission, the Charter Commission, made that decision, and about the community participation the participa participatory, participatory budgeting, budgeting committee commission. or commission. Yeah. When I hear you talk about those two, they were conscious decisions made yeah. by the, the charter uh, commission and they're going to be followed through on. But how are you thinking about uh, other kinds of panels and groups that are going to come forward with specific proposals? Sometimes the council will set up the committee to go and do something and sometimes it'll be an existing board mm -hmm. or commission that's already, uh, I think you call them uh, uh, multiple member committees, which yeah. are made up of people from the community and may have some councils on or may not. And then uh, some things that the, the town manager and his team will put together. How do you as one counselor see that in view of that long history yeah. of frustration that people had of good work going up in smoke. So I see us being able to better have conversations with those bodies, whether it be um, a, a resident committee that has already been set up by a previous government, the select board or town meeting or the manager, or whether it be a committee we set up or whether it be town staff. And when proposals are coming forward, with the frequency of the meetings and the fact that the Charter allows us to have non-voting liaisons on any committee we want, um, and then on committees we form, like participatory budgeting, where the Charter Commission made a, said we need to have a counselor on that committee. Um, we can have those counselors to have that conversation to say, um, to the committee, you know, I'm not sure this might get, this might not go by the council. I'm not sure you can get the votes for it because they've got these concerns. But, but then the committee, in the can middle of their work, work on that. can come back and present to the mm -hmm. council while they're working and saying, here's where we're going. What are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. Because the goal is not to have committees do work. 
that then, as you said, go up in smoke. You know, it's hard to recruit people to committees if they don't think there's going to be a result. Their work is going to be taken seriously. Yeah, so, so I think the, the reason the Charter Commission went with this form and what I think this form brings is that ability to have that two-way conversation with reports. There's sections in the agendas that are just always there of presentations and discussions where committees can come in and say, Here's where we are. We're not done. We're not ready to propose the legislation or propose the change, but this is where we're going. What are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. Which will then better inform their discussions later on as they're doing the research. Um, and then they can come back with the legislation. If we're still not comfortable with it, it can go back and it can go back and forth within a two-week period because we're mm -hmm. meeting pretty much every other week, twice a month on a regular basis yeah. if there's something more important we can meet more. So I think that's where the promise of this system lies in that ability to really have those two-way conversations and back and forth and say, you know, we really believe what you're doing is something we need. We're just not there yet. Mm -hmm. And so bring it back in two weeks and we'll yeah. put it on the agenda in two weeks. And yeah. that was something that the prior government had a, had a, a hard time doing it because of how the structure Everything was. Everything was siloed. Yeah. And so they were part of that group. This is another group and they weren't communicating, and the, the yeah. people who had to make the ultimate decision, the select board uh, in most cases, and the town meeting, they basically there was no communication as the process of developing the proposal was right. unfolding. Yeah. And then also the other feature you mentioned was overlapping membership. There'll be opportunities for town councilors to sit on various panels and for uh, others who need to be involved in that decision. Uh, people who are people who have a seat at the table can often work things out yeah. that if you don't have a seat at the table it's not going to happen yeah. and even if you don't have a seat at the table if there's more communication which is what you're describing uh, along the way you can find the pitfalls try to fix them before you get to the point of final yeah. decision yeah excellent very good so um Another thing that jumped out at me uh, when I was watching, um, I think it was the December 10th meeting of the town council was um, sort of an alphabet soup of, <laughs> of our finance structure. So as best I, I, I figured it out, and I'm not gonna get all the names of them correct, but there's four different panels that all potentially participate in the budget making process where the town council has the ultimate vote right. and decision making. But we've got the finance committee, yes. we've got a capital committee, yes. we've got a um, participatory budgeting commission, commission yeah. and we've got a, one other, help me. The budget coordinating group. Budget coordinating group. So. <laughs> Tell us how, how does that work? Yeah, so, so the finance committee is a committee of the council and that one deals with the budget. So when... And that's the operating budget? That's, that's the whole budget, the whole actually. Budget. The whole budget. Operating um, and capital. Operating and eventually capital. And eventually capital, um, okay. So that's the one that when the manager proposes the whole budget, the budget goes to for review mm -hmm. and for our investigation and all of that. And then it comes from there with a recommendation to the full council to pass. So anything dealing with appropriations, I guess, is a better way to say it. If we're spending money, if we're saying you have the right to spend a million dollars here, that's where the finance committee comes in. Okay. Is that something we want to do and what's the recommendation and all of that? That's the legislative body that's looking at the spending of the money, yeah. um, the big spending, you know, not not line item, but overall spending. Mm -hmm. The budget coordinating group is an essential part of that, in a sense, because our whole budget that comes from the town manager is actually, in a way, five separate budgets. It's a budget drafted by the library trustees for the library expenses. It's a budget drafted by the Amherst School Committee for the elementary school spending. Mm -hmm. It's a budget drafted by the regional school committee for the regional school middle and high school spending. It's a budget drafted by the town manager for town operations, operations town hall yeah. spending. And it's a capital budget, the capital portion. Which um, can go over all Which goes over all, over of, them, all of them, essentially. Okay. And so the budget coordinating group is the group that gets to, it's, it's people from all of those areas. Yeah that get together and say, well, where, how much is each of these big areas going to have based on 
sort of next year's assumed revenue. revenue and state aid and all of that. So they're the ones that'll get together and sort of hash out some of the really big lines um, and, and see if they can get together and, and agree on those guidelines as the budgets are getting drafted and then work within those guidelines. And if not, and a school committee or a library trustee says this guideline you gave me is just not going to work, mm -hmm. that's the group that it would come back to for discussion as to whether that guideline can go up and this one can go down. Then there's the Joint Capital Planning Committee, which is the alphabet soup of JCPC. Yeah. Um, budget coordinating group is BCG. Um, and Joint Capital Planning is a similar group, library trustees, school committee members, town councilors, um, some from finance, some from not, that, that will look at the capital program, the capital mm -hmm. improvement program, which includes a whole lot of things. It includes buying trucks that'll last more than five years, um, buying police cruisers, um, buying lawn mowers, but it also includes putting a roof on a building or repairing the siding of a building, anything that's long-term for it, infrastructure related. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It includes also then all of the town, sort of the big projects that were part of a number of different elections recently, yeah. um, where that's the group that's looking at how do we afford all of that? What are we buying this year under that capital budget? What we can afford and how are you going to pay for how it? How you're going to pay for it and what we're actually going to buy because yeah. there's more requests than yeah. always. money, always. always. So so prioritizing the small small capital and big capital, yeah. you know, because there's different levels of capital. So that's what JCPC does, the Capital Planning Committee. Mm -hmm. And then the charter has this ad hoc committee, this year and a half, two year study committee on participatory budgeting. And that is a committee that right now isn't doing any budgeting work itself. It's going to actually investigate whether within the capital program, the town should set aside a certain percentage or a certain dollar amount, 100,000, 200,000, 5 percent, 3 percent, it's part of what they'll be looking at, mm -hmm. to allow the citizens and the residents of the town, residents, um, to pick what they're going to spend it on. Cambridge has a program and they have a program, I don't know what their dollar amount is, but people, residents can can propose projects, whether it be benches on a street, a water fountain somewhere, a new furniture for a teen lounge, um, or you know anything like that, or, or something bigger. It has to be within a certain dollar amount, and, and artwork, and you know, all sorts of things. And then there's a, a committee that would potentially look at those, put stuff on a ballot, and then that goes out to vote of all the residents in town by strictures in terms of measure. Cambridge allows anyone, I believe, aged 13 and older, whether or not a citizen of the United States, as long as they live in Cambridge, to vote on the projects. And it's a small pot of money it, that's set aside for that process, which engages people in the process of thinking about how you spend public money. Yes. So it's as much an educational experience and experiencing uh, outside of government what the people inside the government are actually doing right. to put together a budget and make decisions because there are too many, too many uh, initiatives chasing too few dollars. And so you get to experience that, but you also get a few things yeah. done along the way. And, and you get to do it with, with children too. Yeah, right. you know, it's, it's a way so to... So they get to learn uh, about public fi a little bit about public finance and budgeting, which by the way they're going to have to learn at home because they have yep. to spend their allowance and they're going to go off to college yeah. soon or start a business or whatever and they have to learn how to budget. So, okay, so uh, what I get out of this part of our conversation is it's confusing. <laughs> yes. But the important thing is that there, there is a system in place for deciding what our priorities are going to be to spend in our operating capital, uh, our operating budget, which means the amount of money we spend each year on the services that we're going to receive, and what we're going to invest in terms of capital, mm -hmm. which are longer term projects, everything from uh, uh, equipment to building buildings and maintaining those buildings. Right. And so what you've described is, although there are five different pockets here, or five different panels, they all have a specific job to do, the result of which is a bunch of different people get to participate in the process. Mm -hmm. Some of them are elected, some of them are appointed, and they get to figure out how we're going to spend our tax dollars. Yes. 
And if you watch each of the panels, you're going to understand more about how our, uh, where our revenue comes from and how we're going to spend that revenue. And the choices that need made. And the choices that have to be made, because there are yeah. always choices that have to be right. made. So in the final minute or so, um, what's your philosophy, philosophy of leadership? Because um, you're a leader. I, yeah, you know, my philosophy is to try and let everyone that wants to be heard be heard. You know, um, it's, it's important to hear different voices, those that don't agree with me, along with those that might agree with me. Um, and so my philosophy is to, to let, it, let it all be said. Um, whether or not it's, it's something I might agree with or not. Um, my other philosophy, I guess, goes along with that, which is try not to prejudge the people saying it, mm -hmm. based on whether I've agreed with them in prior the past. positions uh -huh, in the past uh -huh. that they've yeah. had. Have an open um, mind. Yes. At all so times. I guess that would be a very open mind because you know you might not agree with someone here, but something else that they're saying yeah. might be perfectly on point that yeah. that is something we need to do. And so I try to always keep that open mind and not prejudge, oh it's you know, it's this person's the one proposing it, so of course I'm not gonna agree with it. That's not that's not how I operate because mm -hmm. I don't know whether I'm gonna agree with it till I hear what they say. So I guess that, that would be my, the, the sort of other side of let everyone be heard, which is also keep an open mind because you never know where the good ideas are going to come from. And your philosophy on representation would be roughly the same? It would be. And is there anything else that goes with that? Because representation and leadership are two different roles there, right? They are. You know, I, 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 it, what goes with it, I think, is being willing to put out there um, differences. You know, I, as an at-large candidate, I'm going to have people urging me to do one thing and urging me to do another. And uh, you mean there's going to be differing there opinions are. coming at you? And and when I'm in a council meeting and making a comment, sometimes I'm going to bring those comments forward that that the public have said, and I might not agree with them, but it's something that hasn't been said to the council. And you know, putting that idea out there might spark something else, or might say, you know, you know, we've been talking about this issue, and this one person in public comment said this, and we haven't discussed that. And so, I, I think I see my job in representation and and all of that as making sure all the points of view are put out there and not buried. Great. Well, good luck to you in both your leadership role and Thank you. as a representative of the people. Thank you for joining us. And uh, you can see the show again on Monday evening at 6 p.m. And if you just can't wait until then, you can go on to Amherst Media's website or their YouTube channel and watch it again and again and again until you figure out that whole budgeting scenario. <laughs> Thank you for joining us.